so I've been talking to Nokia, and I've been trying to figure out um, with everyone that has QT, and they already have applications out there, and they don't really know much about App Up, right, and, and Migo. So when when they're looking to develop their apps or port their apps over to Intel's App Up, it's a, it's a whole new it's a whole new ball game because there's entertainment tablets, and you have to build your 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 apps for you know hardware specs kind of right right yeah or keep those in mind. So what are you guys going to do about the future and people not know, understanding? Right. So that's I mean that's that's a that's a good question. I think that um, it's uh, helpful, I think, if the first thing you do is sort of compartmentalize it to a design question and then an engineering question. So if you start with the engineering question, uh, you know, one of the reasons we're excited about uh, our relationship with Nokia and, and all the uh, work we've been doing on Migo is because we think it, it gives us a single API um, which developers can use to develop on top of all Migo devices. Right? So that uh, API is queued based um, and it's part of, you know, will be part of every version of, of Migo that, that shows. So that's the, you know, that solves the engineering problem, which is sort of like, how are you going to build your app? You know, are you going to use this API or that API? Um, we love other APIs, you know, we totally, we, we love Adobe, for example. Um, we've talked about uh, Air on, uh, on Migo here at the show, as well as Flash. Um, uh, so you know we're very excited about uh, about uh, other uh, developer segments as well, obviously, right? Um, but uh, the so the engineering question is a question of um, does this API sort of, will it address the needs of everywhere I want to go with my app? Right. And our goal is that between um, Migo and the Qt API and the Migo a the Migo API, right? That you solve that engineering problem by saying you know, wherever Migo goes, your app should be able to go. The second question is the is the design question, and that is, you know, are you designing for a multi-touch seven-inch uh, um, tablet, or are you developing for um, a handset or a TV, right? And um, it, it's for you know for most most apps, it's it's difficult to design and develop the exact same experience for all of us. Your engineering, you know, you want to be as consistent and, and, uh, and leverageable as possible. So under an ideal circumstance, you write to an API that you know is going to be on every platform, every one of those that you care about, right? which is why, for example, we're bullish on things like Migo and Air. Um, and then you design the guts of the application to be highly portable, highly performant, uh, do good power management, you know. Um, but the design question of you know how do you handle your cursor metaphor? Do you want to have really rich gesturing, or just take what you know take sort of basic gestures? Do you want to have um, you know three buttons or four buttons on your phone version and forty two buttons and a, and a video window and a bunch of other things on your TV? That's all design work that you just need. You know you're going to have to do on a per device basis. Um, so that leads to the last part, which is so if you're going to develop to a specific segment to TV, what's the reference platform? You know. Um, uh, Android handles this via profiles. Um, we're going to do essentially a similar thing, which is we'll have some reference platforms. We'll say, you know, here's the capabilities that you should assume are going to be in this device. Um, you know, maybe there's uh, some number um, for a given segment. You know, for uh, for tablets, there'll be. You know, I don't know, two or five, let's say, reference designs, and then developers can can make smart choices about uh, which of those, you know, what do they support? Like, do you assume that there will be a, a, um, a camera? Do you assume that there'll be GPS? Um, part of what we want to do at the app up level is via our SDK, um, uh, and also you know, work with the Migo team on this, as well as our other uh, runtime partners, is to provide an abstraction so that, for example, you can. Uh, do a location call without having to assume there's a GPS and get back a value from the operating system that sort of gives you a, a location and a level of assurance. Right? So you could say, look, and it could come back and say, I think you're at this ex you know, this lat long and I've got a three meter you know, margin of error versus I think you're in this county right, versus this state or this country, um, all of which are perfectly reasonable statements to come back with from a load value. But what we would like is to get to a place where when you do that location call, you don't have to actually know whether or not, you know, hard code it to say, well, if there's no GPS, I'll just give up, right, versus, you know, the alternative, which is, you know, don't program for location at all. We want to give some people some flexibility.